Hey, hey, everyone. Listen, welcome. Happy Saturday. Um, I hope y'all are enjoying your Saturday so far and staying cool. Listen, where I'm at, it is scorching. And when I say scorching, I mean scorching hot. But I'm here today with a nice book review for you. Hello, everyone. I see you out there. Um, I'm here today with a nice book review for you, right? Um, you're going to enjoy Bonita. I'm telling you, so buckle your seat because we're about to take y'all on a flight. And listen, don't worry. This flight, we're going to help you pack your bags. We're going to help you get rid of that excess baggage, okay? And in addition to that, we're going to just need 60 minutes from you to take you on this flight give you some great tidbits that will help you throughout your life. And also, someone will have the opportunity to win one of these books. So listen, stay tuned for that. Hang out with us. Enjoy this ride. And actually, I'm saying ride, but we're taking a flight, ladies and gentlemen. So enjoy this flight. And I'm going to bring up author Bonita A. Lee. And before I bring her up, her book is called The Waiting Game. Okay, I'm going to um, just kind of show that to you right there. All right. Amazing book, easy read, and we're going to tell you where you can get it. You can get it at your local Barnes and Nobles. You can get it from Anita directly, um, so come through. And if you get it from her directly, I don't know if y'all can see that well. Look at that bookmark. Isn't it the cutest thing? Destiny Airlines. So listen, take this um, moment with us. Take this flight with us. And listen, we're taking y'all on a first class flight, so get ready. Welcome into the building, Bonita A. Lee. Hey, hey. Hi, everybody. Welcome Hi. to the show, Ms. Diva. <laughs> Thank you for having me on. I appreciate you. I appreciate you coming. Thank you so much. And Jackie, thank you so much for the super chat. I truly appreciate it. So, Bonita, I'm so glad that you're here today on uh, spending this Saturday afternoon with us. So you got to tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, my name is Benita Lee, and I'm residing in the suburbs of Detroit, Michigan. I'm a mother. I'm a wife. I'm a mother of two miracle children. Um, I'm a beautician by trade. Also, I'm an event planner and an author. So that's exciting. Very exciting. It's truly exciting. So thank you for that. Yeah. Oh, and you got to get into it a little bit. You said yeah. two miracle children. You may be able to help somebody out here. Yeah. So tell us why you decided to write this book, The Waiting Game. I decided to write the book because I was in a, a place where I was stuck. Um, I felt like my life was not going the way that I wanted to go. And I had a lot to share with people and I can get on the phone and I can go for it and I'm talking and everything. And my husband is listening in the background. He was like, babe, you should write a book. And I was like, me, write a book. He was like, write a book. And I was like, write a book. And he kept saying, write the book. So I said, okay, I wrote the book and it was during a time when um, he was out of work and he just helped me. He would close the door. He would put our children in other rooms. He would watch them and everything and just let me write. And I said, well, I, I'm not that good at English and all the other stuff. He said, don't worry about that. Write the book. So that's what I did. I wrote the book. <laughs> Wow, that's an amazing story. And God bless your husband. I think yes. all partners should support each other, yes. right? Mm -hmm. In their mm -hmm. dreams and encourage each other. So um, you got a good husband there that yes, I do. To, yes, I do. <laughs> to just go ahead and write the book. In addition yes. to that, while you were writing it, he helped you, you know, by you know, just making sure the children gave you your quiet time that you yes. needed in order to write the book. Exactly. So that's great, that's wonderful. I truly enjoyed your book. It's definitely an easy read. And Thank so you. let's start out by taking um, everyone, your first chapter, we're at the gate, and you call that chapter pre-packing. Mm -hmm. um, give us a little bit about that first chapter. The pre-packing to me was um, based on the fact that I knew, um, <laughs> thank you, Lisa, that I knew mm -hmm. that I needed to um, go through and get everything prepared. So I'm doing all of this stuff. And as I'm packing my bags, when we're going on trips, you know pretty much what you're going to take. But on this particular trip, 
I knew that I needed to get some special things and I needed that from God. Nobody could give that to me, but God. So in that pre-packing, I, I kept asking, what should I put in the um, in my suitcase? Am I going to a warm place? Am I going to a, um, a cold place? Where are you taking me, Lord? So in that you know time that I was doing that, I was getting direction each and every step from, you know, um, from God on what I needed to do. And it just became so much easier when I stopped doing my way and doing the things that I wanted to do. And I checked in with God and he gave me everything that I needed to be able to pack. So that's how that started off. And wonderful. So everybody's um, enjoying the fact that like you got a good husband. So you yes. mind telling us, how did you meet your husband? I met him online. It's going to come out in the next book, but this was the beginning of it, um, this whole waiting game. The whole purpose of the waiting was in, in order for me to know that I'm going to do whatever God told me to do, you got to have patience. And, and, and the Bible says to let patience have her perfect work. And so I, I, I wasn't patient. <laughs> I wanted to do it my way. I wanted to do it the way that, you know, I felt. And then I got to thinking, I said, okay, so if it's my way and I haven't met the man that I was believing that I would meet, how is this working for you? And it wasn't. So I ended up meeting him online and I was coming out of a, a really bad relationship. And once I met him, I knew exactly that that was my husband. I knew it. And I, I didn't want to mess it up. So I just took my time and, and was patient about it and everything. And God just worked it out. And he was he was the one. And we've been married yeah. for 17 years. So. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Okay. God bless. Yeah. So, yeah. so listen, uh, uh, single people out there, I'm not going to yes. just say ladies, single yeah. people out there, um, you heard Anita said she met her soulmate online. Mm -hmm. I think um, some of us, like nowadays, we have to open and expand our, um, you know, way of thinking. Oh, yes. um, you, you never know where you, you can meet know. someone at mm -hmm. great mm -hmm. people. You can also just, if you need someone to hang out with, or you want additional friends, like you just want friendships. Mm -hmm. um, so many people online, you can just join different groups and, you know, of course, be careful. We want you right. to be of safe course. and everything. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But you know, be open to perhaps meeting someone online. Um, so thank you for sharing that story. Very it's fun. an amazing story. And the fact that y'all been married for 17 years mm -hmm. is a testament in and of itself. That's mm -hmm. amazing. Um, God bless. Thank so you. our, you're welcome. So mm -hmm. our next chapter is hurry up and wait. Mm -hmm. Um, what is that about? Hurry up and wait is about trying to rush things. The rush mm -hmm. to too soon. You're trying to rush it because you're doing it yourself. And when you're rushing, you know how when you get ready to go to work and you need to find your key, you know, you're getting ready to go and you, you need to grab your purse, your keys and all that other stuff. And you're rushing because you didn't take the time to set your alarm ahead of time and get up on time. So in mm -hmm. that rush, you're going to forget something. In that rush, something is going to be left out or you don't have everything that you need. And that hurry up and wait, you're trying to, you know, go. What about when you're driving in the car and driving too fast? You're wasting gas and you'll end up running out of gas because you're trying to rush to something that you shouldn't. You shouldn't. So I, I had to, you know, stop and think, why, why am I rushing God? God is not moved by my tears and all that. <laughs> oh, God, please. You know, he's not moved by any of that. You know, what he wants me to get is his best or his perfect will for me. And so when I realized that, I was like, okay, I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait. I don't, don't want to rush you. <laughs> so you know, <laughs> I, I know that I have the best for me, you know, so. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's a good chapter and it's good information there. Hurry up and wait. And mm -hmm. you are correct. You gave a, a perfect analogy, right? Because um, just yesterday, I promise you, I lost my only car key. I was like, okay, where is it? I knew in my mind, I saw myself sitting somewhere, but I couldn't picture where I sat at. Mm -hmm. um, I lost my natural mind to the point where I was calling locksmiths. <laughs> um, my, my, my sister was like, calm down. You're going to find right. it. Right. Um, and do you know, don't you know, today I walk in my living room and it was sitting right, right it there. was like sitting right there in my face, yeah. right there in my face. When you panic, when you mm -hmm. rush, when mm -hmm. you get too emotional, yes. um, things never go right as you never. stated, right? Mm -hmm. um, exactly. But if you prepare, mm -hmm. you know, if you prepare ahead of time, 
um, you have a better chance of things going well. So yeah. I really do like that. Um, that hurry up and wait. If yeah. you just wait, take your time. Wait your turn, right? Because yeah. I think be sometimes peace. too. Mm -hmm. Yes, Bonita. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, it's okay. Yeah. I think sometimes too, and you may be able to talk to this a little bit, is that we see, we trust, but then we see what appears like everybody around us getting blessed, so to speak, or their turn is coming. And you like, okay, okay, I'm calm. I'm celebrating with them. But when is it going to be me? Listen, Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, because you know I wanted to jump in there. Listen <laughs> to me. That was so me at, um, okay, it was an 18-year period that I was believing God for a husband. At okay. year eight, I was like, I'm seeing all these people get married, male and female, and trying not to be judgmental. And so I'm, I'm thinking, what way can I support them? Because you follow those who through faith and patience have inherited the promise. They're inheriting something that I really wanted. So I'm like, right. let me get alongside of them and support them. So if it was the bride, I, I started doing flowers. I didn't know how to do flowers. I started making, that's how I became an event planner. And so as time went on and everything, and I'm like, don't be jealous, pray for them. Pray mm -hmm. for them to have a really good marriage because guess what? That's seed into their marriage that I'm going to be in that same place one day. And I don't want anybody to be jealous of me. I want them to um, pray for me, encourage me, help me do whatever it is that needed. So I'm like, I'm going to sow some good seeds into their life. And that's what I started doing. So it just yeah. became easier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, yeah i think we all probably have been there right mm -hmm. and done that mm -hmm. um i joke around but i'm somewhat serious maybe not 27 i don't know if you ever saw that um movie 27 dresses um oh, i've been I, yeah it's about it's about a bridesmaid that she's always a bridesmaid <laughs> and never a bride <laughs> she's been at 27 weddings yes but at the end, she's in the wedding and all 27 bridesmaids, they support her. Oh um, <laughs> it was, it's a cute movie, but it's just, you know, kind of this idea of if we wait, our time will definitely come, right? Exactly. It's going to happen. And exactly. while you're waiting, you know, there's no need to be jealous. You support the people. Um, right. You keep praying mm -hmm. and, you know, you, definitely your time will come. So, yes, I love that. A great chapter and a great... Um, you know, way to let people know that just be patient. Yeah. Um, patience is a virtue, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, and you know, it is sometimes easier said than done. Of course. But of course. Uh, yes, but I mm -hmm. promise you, I promise you, if you're patient enough, your time will come. And mm -hmm. I promise you this also, if you're impatient and you try to do it your way, Ooh, you're going to have a price to pay. Right, right. You're going to have a price to pay. And it's brutal. It's nasty. You know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and yeah, it's just some people wonder, like, how did I get here? How did I get with this person? What happened? Because mm -hmm. you rushed the process, exactly. right? Exactly. You wanted to stop it on your own, and you stopped it on your own. God told you to stop. You blew through the stop sign, so yeah. this is what you get. Right, 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 exactly, exactly. That is one of the things and stuff that it is easier said than done. And it mm -hmm. is one of those things and stuff where you could have envy. And I did not want that to build up in my heart. And so if I stayed in my lane, which I did, and did what God told me to do, and I kept hearing him saying, um, he's preparing me. He's preparing mm. me. He's preparing me. So if you're preparing me, I don't need to tell anyone else what God is doing for me. I just I just was doing what I was supposed to do. So I bought my dress at the eight year mark. And I was like, oh, you did? I, it was 99 bucks. I was like, it was on sale, plus size dress. I'm like, I'm getting that mug. Wait, I, wait, hung wait, wait, on, wait, I hung it up on the back of the door. <laughs> but I couldn't I couldn't tell anyone because people probably would have thought I was crazy. crazy. You know, but <laughs> when the time came, I was like, I already I got my dress. You know, so I just had to buy my slip and my shoes or, you know, or what have you. So it just ended up working out for me. And that, that's not for everyone, you know, right. but to encourage people that when you're doing what God has told you to do, no one else has to say anything to you about anything. You just obey God. And that's what I did, you know. And some of the skeptical people later on kept coming up and saying, wow, 
so that confession sheet that you had, can I have a copy of that? You know, or that whatever. I, I was like, oh, so now I'm not the crazy one. <laughs> so, yeah, yes, so. people, let me say this. Valencia, God's baking a cake and you're trying to bake cookies. Oh, I love that analogy. Right. That's yes. <laughs> oh, yes. oh, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Welcome, welcome into the building. I love that comment there. Yes. Right. So, yeah, you just now let me tell you something. That was bold of you. Um, mm -hmm. and listen, I'm too flaky. Yeah, I will buy a dress now, and honey, the time will come. I'll be like, I ain't wearing that dress. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. You just have two dresses. <laughs> yeah, I just have two dresses, right? right? So mm -hmm. yeah, that that's beautiful, amazing story. So I yeah, eight you bought your dress and then your your thing came. Um, okay, so wait, Lisa said I met my husband through my brother. Oh, oh. On a, and our forty. Oh well, congratulations, wow. Lisa! Wow, yeah. forty years. That is beautiful. It Absolutely is. beautiful. Um, so Mary said, yeah, it's hard at times to be patient and wait, but God always comes through at the right yes, time. Mary. You yeah. said it right there at mm -hmm. the right time. He will show up and show out. So, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I love it. So, Vanilla, we're going to move on because we're, we're, we're gliding through our flight. We're first class here. Yeah. And you have a chapter called Excess Baggage. Mm -hmm. um, tell us about that. The excess baggage are the things that we want to carry, the people that we want to bring into what we're about to do. Um, mm. Those are things and stuff, those bad relationships, the people that are toxic in our lives, the people who are, they just don't believe that God is going to do those things and stuff for you. And it's like, you're looking at them, but you, you know, you don't, you don't really need to bring them. They don't need to have access, you know, into your life like that. And so it becomes baggage. And I kept thinking about the scripture that talks about lay aside every weight that so easily beset you. And I kept mm. seeing myself walking up to the altar with these suitcases and putting them down and just being able to walk away. Just whatever is in there is in there. It's not for me to carry I, I can walk away. And that's exactly what I did. Some some people that were so negative, you know, people are so cruel at times. But um, when the time came for me to start moving in that process of getting married, I noticed that they wanted to come alongside of me. And I said, if I let them into what God was doing, then they wouldn't they would, you know, ridicule me. And I wanted God to get the glory. I got the benefit of just obeying God. So that excess baggage was I wasn't taking things in with me that God didn't want me to take in. Mm. So, yeah, it was easier to do it that way, you know. Right, to get rid of that baggage. I think mm -hmm. that a lot of us, we, we carry a lot of baggage. I think mm -hmm. a lot of us, some of the baggage that we carry, we're afraid to let it go because it's connected to some very close people to us, right. like family members um, or, or friendships that we're like, well, I've been friends with them for 15, 20 years. And mm -hmm. we feel like we can't let them go for whatever reason. Right. Um, it's, it's weird, right? It's, yeah. it's weird mm -hmm. how we feel like we can't let go of um, certain baggage. And then sometimes we've been in relationships so long, um, it becomes our new norm. Right. It mm -hmm. becomes our new norm, even though they're baggage. Even though um, it's baggage. Mm -hmm. Even though it's baggage, it becomes our new norm. So um, I love that chapter. It's like, you Thank know you. what? And then here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Once you drop the baggage off, don't go back and pick it up again. No, no, mm -mm. nope. I don't care what kind of suitcase it is. It could be a Gucci suitcase or an expense. <laughs> Leave that mug there. Leave it there. <laughs> Leave it there. Leave, leave it where it's at. Mm -hmm. So see what Ty says. Um, gotta cut some of those old branches to grow and move forward. Hashtag um dead weight. Oh, yeah. Ty, that's beautiful. I love mm -hmm. that. I love that. That is that is such a good thing there. Um, family and friends are hard and somewhat hurtful decision. Ooh. It has to be done. Yes. Ooh, it has yeah. to be done, right? Yeah. You have to do it for your own mental health and uh, uh, mindset and state of being, right? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, wow, that is great. And I know some of you out there, I would encourage you this, you know, on today. And we know it's not easy, but some things you can't debate about it. You can't no. overthink it. You got to say, you know what? I'm done. I'm mm -hmm. done. Um, mm -hmm. I had a very good friend. I, I loved her. Friends for years. 
But literally, I promise you, every single time, and I don't mind hearing people's problems, right? Mm -hmm. Um, sort of speak, if I use that word. But every single day, it was nothing but negativity. Wait. And I don't care. Yeah, wait. Mm -hmm. That way. They yeah. just wait. <laughs> and you know what? And it does impact you. Yes, it, it does. really does. Mm -hmm. It does, right? Every single time I spoke to her, it was nothing but problems and negativity mm -hmm. and no matter how much goodness i tried to speak hers was overweighing my goodness because it was so heavy it was boom 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 no this is right. wrong that is wrong the world this is... and i finally one day i was just like i can't talk to her no more mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i stopped calling i, I ignored phone calls mm -hmm. it hurt at first but the benefit i gained from not having right. all that negativity in my life it was greater for me yeah. so Benita, if you could give the people one tip, because we do know it's difficult, right? Mm -hmm. If you could give a person one tip on just how to get rid of some excess baggage, what would you say? One of the things that I would say is to cut and run. Mm. <laughs> you, it ain't no, you can't. First, I was going to say, you know, you can set boundaries and all that other stuff. People know how right. to work around bond boundaries really good. And I'm like, yes, I set this boundary, but, but you keep pushing me back. <laughs> it's like, no, cut and run, <laughs> cut and run. Because right, Sharon, it is draining. And mm -hmm. you find yourself carrying around the things. That, and it's like, hold on. Why is my day going so bad? I woke up refreshed and rejuvenated. Yes. And I got this call. And now I am carrying around their problems. You know, right. yes, I can pray for them and stuff, but pray for yourself. What are you doing yes. for yourself other than complaining? So I would mm -hmm. say cut, cut and run. You know, drop I the love pie. that. Oh, God, did y'all hear that? That's a good tip, honey. Cut and what? run. Mm -hmm. Run and don't look back while you're running. Right. <laughs> Be like that. you booking it away from that situation. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yes, yes. Alicia, That's run. my other sister, sister Alicia. Um, <laughs> she was like running. Yes. yes, run, Alicia, run. How many run. sisters do you have? I have two sisters. And oh, one nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, beautiful. Uh oh. Can I tell you something? Yes. I have two sisters and one brother. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. We, we, so we connected good. here. We're yes. fine. Exactly. We're fine. Exactly. Okay. You do good so interviews, though, to... though. So I love that. I didn't yes, mean to cut you yes. off. You do good interviews. So. Oh, thank you. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. So we're at gate four, right? And gate uh -huh. four says, wheels up in time to soar. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk about that. What do you mean there? Wheels up in time to soar means that nothing is holding you down on the ground. When those wheels go up on that plane, you get a chance to just fly. Nobody is, you know, trying to catch you or do anything or, you know, cause you to stay on the ground. It's time for those wheels to fold up and it's time for your flight and you're gone. When you get up in that air, nothing is stopping you. So that was what that chapter was about. I or love anything. it. If it's not on the, you know, with the wheels, it could be on the train. When you get on your tri your trip, you're gone. You know, anything mm -hmm. that's back, you won't see it until you come back home. So... <laughs> Yes, yes. So wheels up in time to soar. What I want to say about that, guys, is that you know we all are we all have dreams. It's in us. Mm -hmm. Um, and then somewhere along the way, we might have bumped into somebody and ran into someone who discouraged us from our dream. And all of them were mm -hmm. not being mean. Some of them really thought they was being helpful to you, right? Some of them thought they were saving you from what they saw as a pitfall because maybe it was a pitfall for them, right? Mm -hmm. So when the wheel's up in time to soar, I'm thinking, you know what? No matter what age you are, mm -hmm. no matter what point you are in life, right. um, if you have woke up and you're breathing again that day, follow your dreams, right? do what it is you want to do, mm -hmm. um, reconnect with that thought process you had when you was a kin kid before anybody killed your dreams, right. okay? <laughs> yes. Connect with that thought process and do your thing. Mm -hmm. And you're always going to have people, unfortunately, that oh. are going to um, try to block you and stop you. Mm -hmm. And the reason why you got to ignore that is because sometimes they're seeing in you what they wish they had the courage to do. And the only thing that could come out of their mouth is negativity. Exactly. And, you know, even me, when I started this, you know, channel, um, 
you know, people came for me a lot and mm. I just ignore all the negativity and I embrace the people that love me. Right. And I use the embracing from the people that love me and I'm going to keep pushing and carrying mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and when you do that and you have the courage to do that, when the wheels are up and you know it's your time to soar, nothing will stop you. Who going to stop you? Who going to stop, gonna stop you? you? Yeah. Who, Who going to stop, gonna stop you? you? <laughs> mm -hmm. What God you. has for you is for you and nobody is yes. going to take you out of that, that place. You know, so... It, it it doesn't really matter what anyone says, what anyone does. It's like, bye. <laughs> I'm going on my trip. So I'm going on my trip. See you. Mm -hmm. See you later. See you when yes, I get back. Exactly. <laughs> Deuces. <laughs> Deuces. Right. <laughs> I love it. So we're at gate five. Okay. And it's the holding pattern. Mm -hmm. um, talk to us about the holding pattern because the holding pattern in my mind sometimes that's when you lose hope, lose faith and lose your mind but go ahead, talk to me <laughs> that's exactly what happened during that particular time um, I was, you know, all gung-ho and yes, you know, believing God for my husband then it got to a point of where I was getting weary and I had mm. to on, you know, tapping into my my uh, mentors and, you know, asking for prayer. And I felt like I was out in the deep and just trying to swim all, all by myself. So when you think about an airplane and it's in the air and then you hear them change the engine, you know, like the little tone or whatever happens with the engine. And then it, you're just kind of floating. That's what I was in a floating, you know, position and stuff, waiting to land. When is this plane going to land? Where's my time, you know, coming? But in that discouragement, I realized that I wasn't trusting God during that particular time. So I was in that holding pattern, back connecting with, you know, um, that's my mama, um, oh. back connecting with God and everything. And it just became so much easier, you know, to realize that I'm, I'm where I'm supposed to be but God is holding me there. So he's keeping me away from any of the negative things that could, you know, bring me down, causing me to get off track, causing me to get in a place and stuff where I was discouraged or depressed or anything like that. That's, that's not of God. So I knew that I was in the place that I needed to be. I just had to keep trusting him, keep trusting him. So he, he helped me in the right place and I just had to keep trusting him. Wow. Okay, so hey mom, <laughs> you can't soar with eagles when you hang with turkeys. I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you. You 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 know, it's like sometimes, unfortunately, you know, there's a saying you can't bring everybody with you. No. Mm -mm. You can't bring everybody with you. And so you have to make the decision for your own life. Like, mm -hmm. am I going to stay here and right. hang with them? and not fulfill my dream and my right. destiny? Right. Am I going to walk into my destiny or I'm going to keep playing over here in the mud with them? Exactly. Exactly. You, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to be an eagle, mom. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, you know, I guess the biggest, one of the biggest lessons we could tell people when they seem to be in the holding pattern, mm -hmm. right? It's mm -hmm. just, just give it a minute. Don't lose faith. Yes, exactly. Um, stay the course. Stay the and course. Mm -hmm. Beta course, right? Mm -hmm. It's weird. It's like, and then one day you wake up and it's like, oh my God, I'm here. Right. Um, right. It, it, it's the weirdest thing. I was just talking to one of my girlfriend, childhood girlfriend. We've been friends since grade school. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was born and raised in the Bronx, lived in the city uh, most of my life. You know, I don't live in the city anymore, but that's where I know this one girlfriend from. And, you know, she went back to school to go, she went to film school. And now, you know, we call this our second half, um, okay. her and I, like, we're like, this is our second half. You know, so now during her second half, she is filling one of her dreams of, like, making films. And mm -hmm. she said to me, she was like, I see it, I feel it, I'm doing a lot. And I told her, just hold on. You're going right. to get there. Right. You're going to exactly. get there. Mm -hmm. Stay the yeah, point, yeah. right? Yeah, you can't so, lose hope. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. I like that. Don't mm -hmm. lose hope. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that. Beautiful. So we're going to move into gate six because okay. we got everybody on their first class fight. Listen, guys, I hope y'all enjoying your first class fight here with Bonita. Okay. Mm -hmm. Show us some love, right? <laughs> Show us some love if you're enjoying this first class fight. So Thank we're at you, gate bye. six. 
<laughs> Thank you, Ty. We're at gate six, and we're going to give everybody the boarding pass. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you mean by the boarding pass? The boarding pass for me was um, I had a couple of failed relationships, some different things that happened, had got engaged when I was um, went to go visit my sister in Germany. And what I ended up um, doing was I had a pass in my hand. I'm ready to get on my flight. And all of a sudden he changed his mind and he didn't want to get married. And that's, that's okay. Of course, now it's okay. And I'm glad that God allowed it to go like that. So this whole embarrassment of my, I'm on my flight, going to my seat, and then I look and someone is in my seat. And I was like, I'm on the wrong plane. So that embarrassment of getting off the plane to go back to the, you know, into the concourse and all that other stuff, grab my luggage down and all this other, other stuff, things are going to happen that are not supposed to happen. But because of the fact that when you're on your flight, nobody can stop you. Thanks, Mary. Um, nobody can stop you. Nobody can cause you to, to be on the wrong flight, wrong seat, wrong anything. No, no one is going to come put you off the plane. You're where you're supposed to be. And in those relationships, I wasn't supposed to be there. I felt like I got snatched out of them and God put me where I was supposed to be. You know, I have a good support system. My mom and them, you know, they they didn't think I was crazy. Well, they didn't say I was crazy, but you know, <laughs> they, they didn't think I was crazy. Always supporting. But I just knew that I wasn't supposed to just stay, you know, in that place. I knew I was supposed to be a wife, you know, and in that case, in my career and everything, I was a successful beautician, you know, but it's something you just know when something is not right. And you're just going to keep on striving to do things. So I'm like, didn't want to push my way onto this plane, you know, so to speak. I didn't want to push my way, but I had my boarding pass. So I'm I'm supposed to be here or so I thought. And so when he mm -hmm. said he didn't want to get married, I said, I guess I'm not supposed to be here. So, you know, <laughs> got off that plane and kept on on my journey. You know, so. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, Black Swan, it is definitely an excellent book. Um, so why don't we pause for a minute here, um, Benita, and just tell everybody where they can get the book. Um, okay. And yeah, go ahead. And where okay. they can follow you at and find you. Mm -hmm. Okay. The book can um, be purchased on Amazon.com. And when you um, type in, you can put in The Waiting Game, Benita A. Lee is on um Amazon is on Barnes and Noble. And I looked last night, I'm on Books a Million. I was like, praise God. But on my website, if you want to order and you want to get a bookmark and, and get it signed, you can go to www.leeandlee31.com. Leeandlee31.com. So, and on social media, I, I don't do the social media too. Much. <laughs> it's okay. I have my business we'll page, you. but I don't. I yeah. don't know <laughs> we'll find you. But I want to let everybody know that, of course. When we do these book reviews, you know, I love books. I love reading and I love to give away a copy. And Bonita has sent me a copy to give away to somebody, um, one of the subscribers. And mm -hmm. I'll figure that out in a minute. You know, I'm so bad with that. But listen, guys, when I do announce that you have won this free book, please um, contact me via email because I want to send it out to you right away. This book is going to bless and change your life. Um, tell a friend about it. Um, because we all need, you know, uplifting words and we all need ways to find ourselves. Like, how do I wait when I'm in that holding pattern? When I know I was meant to be a wife, um, mm -hmm. but I seem to keep running into the people that are just not meant for me. Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, how do I wait on God for him to send me that person that is for me? So mm -hmm. um, that was a great pause. We threw some things out there. I will also update the um, description box so that y'all can know all of the places where you can get this book. Um, but if you do get it from Vanita's site, you're, you're going to get an extra special gift because this is the cutest. I'm trying to see. I know I'm bad. Um, this is the cutest bookmark i've ever seen it's like Thank a flight you. ticket okay <laughs> so and she and she packages up so nice when she sends it out um i was blessed just by the packaging so guys get the book 
and I will update the comments. But if you don't remember anything, at the very least, you can go to Amazon and you can get it. Mary, mm -hmm. thank you so much. I appreciate that nice comment. So let's get to gate number seven, guys. Gate number seven is flying economy versus first class. Um, talk to us about that, Benita. I want to get on. We on a first class fight right now. We took the ladies. We took everybody in the audience on a first class fight. But talk to us about that. Right. When you get um on a plane, you get to first class first, and then you see all the little, you know, it's behind the curtains and all the other stuff. And then when we're going economy, you you get the raggedy seats at times and possibly dirty and different things like that. And what ends up happening is we think that that's where we're supposed to stay or we're supposed to always fly. I was on a flight one time and I said, I want to go in first class. I, I want to see what first class is like. I was really surprised it was only an extra $25. And all that wow. time I've been in economy. But I'm like, when God is doing it, you want that level of excellence. So I, I kept on saying, okay, God, you know, if you want me to fly, you know, first class, I want to go. And went there and a lady let me go. I didn't even have to pay. She told me what it was. She was like, come on up here. And I got up there, extra leg room, you know, needed the extra wider seat, you know, for the fluffiness, praise the Lord, you know, but I felt that that was where I was supposed to be. So I got a chance to go, you know, first class and, you know, it, it was different, you know, it was different. And so when we look at our lives, don't stay in the economy. Don't stay, you know, mm. oh, I, I can't afford this or I can't. You'll be surprised on things that you can do. During a time when my husband was out of work, we started couponing, you know, and I was like, couponing, you know, you do what you got to do to get where you're supposed to get, do what you can do and God will do the rest, you know, so that's yeah. what I did, you know, I, I started flying first class and that's how I've always been. Not so much as having to have really expensive things, but being a good steward over what I have. And it makes me feel like I'm in first class. So, yes, I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. And yes, I agree with you, right? You never know. You so know. you got to find out. Okay, mm -hmm. Lisa says she loves couponing too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, listen, listen, if something costs $10 and you can get it for five legitimately, why not? Who, right. who Save your other $5. Yes. yes. Um, yes. You know, I, I love a discount. I'm not mm -hmm. ashamed, you know, to get me a little discount. I love it. And I always, mm -hmm. you know what I always ask? I mean, what's the worst answer they can say is no, right? Right. So exactly. I always say, do you have a coupon? Do you have this? Do you have that? Um, so yes, everybody get used to excellence. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I kind of got from this chapter yes. here, right? Yeah. Is get used to excellence. Um, you deserve nothing but the best, exactly. but you got to tell yourself that and mm -hmm. remind yourself every day. And yeah. listen, I tell you, hey, Gabor, <laughs> I'm friendly of my buddy. <laughs> hey, sweetie. yeah. Hey, man. Yes, yes. So you got to get used to it. And mm -hmm. I kind of tell myself every day. And my friends say, why don't you use paper plates? No, I'm going to use my dishes. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. going to use my dishes every day. Mm -hmm. And listen, and I throw them in the dishwasher every day after mm -hmm. I use them because mm -hmm. I'm not one to be washing the dishes. But, um, but, <laughs> but my point is, you know, growing up and God bless, right? Because mm -hmm. the more we know, the better, the more we grow, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So growing up, you know, in my family, there was a certain set of dishes you only used every now mm -hmm. and then, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I use my stuff all the time. Right. I promise you. Because listen, when I go, whoever takes it and get They're it, they only use it at once. Okay. And I listen, and also I don't like I don't overspend to the point where I'm not going to be able to pay my bills and take care of my life. But mm -hmm. if I want it, I go get it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and I'm going to live my life because listen, when I'm gone, whoever gets my money, they're not going to be so cautious with it. Um, <laughs> so I'm like, going to yes. spend it now. Yes. I'm going to spend it now. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to do mm -hmm. everything it is I don't want to do. And I'm going to love my friends. And, you know, I share with my friends too. Like, right. you know, I do. I like to live, you know, my best life. And mm -hmm. that's part of what I got from this chapter too, is right, live your best life. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I joke around and I promise you, my house is small, right? 
Mm-hmm. But I joke around with everybody. I call this my mini mansion. Yeah. I love it. I, I mm-hmm. do everything in here that I want. That's mm-hmm. part of me living my best life. So um, Sin said, that's exactly how we raise our children. Um, each one teach one. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so, I, so do I, Diva. I use the heck out of anything I buy. So do I. Come <laughs> on, we're going to use it. We're going to use it now. Wow. What y'all going to do? Mm-hmm. So, yes. Yeah. We're at gate seven, guys, and, you know, the lesson here is I'm going to say live your best life. That's what I got out of this chapter, right? Mm -hmm. Find Mm -hmm. economy versus first class. You never know. Sometimes you think you can't afford to go to a certain restaurant or store, but you can. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, you know what I do, too, is I go to some places on their off day Mm -hmm. um, because... You know, you see what I mean? Because you mm-hmm. can get a discount on a day where not so many people may become. You right. never know. You have to ask. Yeah. So I'm loving your book. I hope Thank y'all you. are enjoying the flight, guys. And we are about to go to gate number eight. It says cancel flight, wrong assets pass. Well, I'll let you speak first and then I'm going <laughs> to tell you what I got out of this. <laughs> so let, let me say it again, guys, because mm-hmm. this is a good one. Cancel flight, Mm -hmm. wrong access pass. Go Mm -hmm. ahead. When you're trying to, back to what I was saying about pushing your way, trying to do things and stuff that's out of order that you're not supposed to do. And then you get there and, you know, a lot of things are so much more than just embarrassment. You know, these can be destiny intersections or they can be, you know, things that cause you to give, get completely and totally off your path or off the place where you're supposed to be. And if you don't have the credentials or if you don't have the keys to where you're supposed to be going when you get there, you're going to be denied access. So mm. I'm like, I want, you know, I want to be able to have green lights going all through everything that I have to do. I want to have the keys there when I go to to put my key in the door, I know that I'm supposed to go through that door. I know that I'm supposed to do this particular thing. If if I if I don't, then I'm just standing up there going, okay, I missed something somewhere. So <laughs> that's <laughs> what I was trying to get convey in that chapter. I love it. So Gabor said, you never know what you can do until you try. I agree. We always tell ourselves no without no. even trying. Oh exactly. my gosh, I truly agree with that. We beat ourselves up. Yeah. I think sometimes we beat ourselves up more than other people do. Right. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, sometimes mm-hmm. we could be our own worst enemy. And that's why you got to just you got to just try. Um, yeah. I think a lot of closed doors um, are because, you know, God's trying to save us, even though we may see it as a nightmare sometimes. Yeah. Like, Why did I get the job? Why doesn't this person like me? Mm-hmm. And I will add this to you. The biggest heartbreak, you know, I don't know if any other um, female or any other person has went through this, but the biggest heartbreak is like could be when you were supposed to get married mm-hmm. and, and, and they kind of left you at the aisle, left you at the altar. Um, I've been through that situation. Mm-hmm. It was heart wrenching. I thought mm-hmm. I wasn't going to live. I promise you I did. Um, wow. And then hindsight, God saved me. Yes. She mm-hmm. saved me. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you, Ty. Oh, thank I'm you, glad Ty. you purchased the book. Thank you, Ty. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. So, yes, it's like, you know, sometimes no is saving you. Right. Yes, yes. It's oh, not yes, right yes, now. Thank you, Lord. Yes, sometimes mm-hmm. rejection is protection. Yes. That, yes. That's yes. Good. That is a good one, right? It, it right. really is. But I promise you, um, at that point in time, I couldn't even breathe. I was just right. like, why is this happening? Mm-hmm. But I will also say this to you. I'm not, I got to tell the truth in hindsight. Um, God told me several times that mm-hmm. that wasn't the one for mm-hmm. me. Okay. He told me to stop. I blew through the stop sign. He put up the yellow sign. I ignored it. The okay? red flags <laughs> that you keep on. No, that's that's yellow. That's not red. That's that's green. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh God! And I paid the price for that one. But yeah. looking back, I said to myself, you know, thank you, God. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I think people have to just, you know, just know, like Gabor said, I love that rejection is protection. 
Yeah. Don't look at it as a negative. Don't mm -hmm. look at it like, why me? Mm -hmm. um, you are being protected and you better be grateful for that protection. Closed doors are painful. Mary, yes, yes they are. But God protects us by closing doors in our hearts sometimes. Mary, yeah. all mm -hmm. the time. Yeah. I agree with you 100%. <laughs> yes, amen, right? Um, um, Mary said, I had to learn that when a door closed, is God saying not yet? Yes, there's mm -hmm. something better for you. Be patient. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Um, mm -hmm. Dodge that bullet. Yes, yes. Sometimes we don't listen. Let yeah. me tell you. Let me tell you, I can say it now because I'm older, right, but right. there was a lot of times where I just did not listen, okay? But I'm still here, and that's the um, perfect thing. So cancel flight, wrong access pass, and listen, I think what we want to throw out there is that um, when a flight is canceled, when you have the wrong access pass, you're yeah. being protected. Yes. So, you know, mm -hmm. stay afloat, um, uh, worry not. Right. It, it, it's for your own good that mm -hmm. those doors were closed and you had the wrong pass. So exactly. I love that. Loving the book, guys. I hope y'all check it out on Amazon. Tell a friend about it. Um, yes. It's a great, great read. So we're going to gate eight, guys. I hope y'all still with us. I hope y'all ready. It says restricted access. Don't go there. <laughs> Wait, hear, hear this, guys. Restricted access. <laughs> Don't go there. Did you ever play the game Monopoly uh, when you was younger? It says, do not pass go. <laughs> right. Do not pass go. Okay. Right. This says restricted access. Don't go there. Um, tell us about this chapter. That was one of the chapters where I kept on hearing the no's, the red flags, but mm -hmm. I want to, God, and the whatever no <laughs> it was like that ah, you know <laughs> no and then of course after i went there oh, please help my heart you know about it when i should have just listened so that yeah. whole restricted access when you think about going to the airport and they have areas where you are you're able to freely go and then they have those gates that if you walk through there you're going to set off some alarms and I really wish that I would have heard those actual alarms and I wouldn't have done, you know, some of the things, made the mistakes, talked to, you know, people and stuff that I, even in my career, you know, trying to listen to people and stuff like that. So, yeah, you learn a lot, you know, restricted access will only, you're supposed to go where God tells you to go and there only. And then you will have the freedom to move instead of being restricted, you know, so... Mm. Yeah, instead of being restricted. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. I love that restricted access. So I know some of us, I got a lot from this chapter also. I got a lot from the book, in case y'all guys haven't been able to tell that already. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Thank um, you. you're welcome. So restricted access, don't go there. You know, this can be applicable to many areas in your life. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about relationships a lot. But sometimes it's jobs, right? Mm -hmm. It's sometimes jobs that we kind of get stuck in. And so I would say this for anybody right now, because we spend so much time on our jobs, uh, excess of 40 hours, over 40 hours a week. Um, some of us that don't work from home, you're traveling to this job, which is hours. You're traveling home from this job, which is hours. And I, I, I say to the best of your ability, um, try to find a job or um, ways to make money that is going to really touch your heart and soul. Mm -hmm. And I promise you that the money will eventually come mm -hmm. because if you're not happy 40 hours out of the week, that's a lot of hours. A lot of hours. That's a lot of hours, right? Mm -hmm. And then what happens is because it's probably not the right fit for you, um, that's why the access is restricted. Mm -hmm. That's why you can't get the supervisor level or the management level or the levels that you're wanting to go to because you're not supposed to be there in the first right. place. Right. 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 And that's why your access is restricted and you shouldn't even be there or go there. Now, we don't premature every, everybody. We ain't trying to say, uh, call the boss <laughs> up today and tell him you're done. Right. <laughs> I'm just saying that find your best happy place even when it comes to work, because 
every part of your life, you know, it facts it factors into the rest of your life and it's a trickle effect. Do you know what I mean? Right. It exactly. impacts everything. Mm -hmm. If you're happy at the job, then you're probably happy when you come home and you're happy with your relationships with your significant other and your kids. Right. If the job is getting on your nerves, then you're probably going to come home and get on your spouse nerves and your kids nerves. Right. And it's going to be a whole hot mess. Okay. Right. It's going to be a whole hot mess. So when you're happy, um, it, it, it kind of trickles into almost everything you do. And even the people you interact with, they feel that happiness, right? right. Um, so we're at gate nine, guys. Like restricted access, don't go there. Um, you know, we just want you to live your best life. I think that's what this book um, did for me too. It's about living your best life. Um, my ex took a new job out of state and didn't file for divorce. Um, wow. We didn't argue or anything. It hurt, but God was protecting me. Ty, wow. God was protecting you. Um, you know, I don't want to get into my whole life story right now, but Ty. I'm telling you, I've been through something just as horrific. A girl, listen, the, my girlfriends had to come feed me. They was like, okay, you got to stop playing. You got to eat. Like, right, you right. got to get yourself together. Mm -hmm. But in the long run, you are right. You're being protected. And mm -hmm. if you can get through that moment, just hold on. You mm -hmm. know, what's that song? I'm going to take you back to a gospel song, Joy Cometh in the Morning, right? <laughs> right. Jo jo joy will come in the morning. And it may not be the next morning, but I promise you, it's, it's going to come. come. It's, it's going to come. come. Um, first, Beyonce told us to quit our jobs. <laughs> now, he was telling us to quit. <laughs> I guess it's time to quit. LL. Listen, Miss, I, listen, I don't want nobody to be homeless now. Right. We want you to think about it first. We want you to think about it. Yes. And it's going to come. Black Swan, trust God for um for I know the plans I have for you. Come on, Black Swan. Yeah. The clear the Lord. Plans for you to prosper and not harm. Plans for mm -hmm. peace and not war. That your ladder will be greater than your first. Mm -hmm. Girl, you almost got tears coming yeah. in my eyes, Black Swan. <laughs> um, and I'll say girl, but you know, I don't know. But Black Swan, you touched me. So listen, I got to give away this book in my hands. I wish I could give to every single subscriber that is watching right now. But Black Swan, this is going to you. So hit me up in my email. Yay. You are getting the book that Bonita donated to give to one of the subscribers, Black Swan. Um, thank you so, so much. Um, Miss Queen of the Moor, please do me a favor. Put my email address in the chat um, so she can hit me up in the email address and I'm going to send you that book. You are today's winner. Congratulations. Thank you. And thank you for reminding us of what that said in the Bible, because yes, that is from the Bible, and I truly, truly um, do appreciate that because He knows the plans He has for us, yeah. and He just wants us to stay on track so those plans and everything He has for us will mm -hmm. come to fruition. Mm -hmm. Um, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, thank you, so yeah, everybody. <laughs> saying congratulations. Okay. I'm gonna add one thing yeah. with you just saying that it made me think about how we can be somewhere and we're so settled in and we think that that's where we're supposed to be. And his plans, like she said, that he has for us is not at that place. And then you feel like, you know, well, um, I, I need to move. I need to do this. I need to quit this job. But you're so fearful to do that. And then God comes in and intervenes to get you back on track. So it's like, oh, I done lost my job. He's going to provide for you. He's going to make yeah. sure that you have everything that you need. Because if it was up to you, you wouldn't have moved. You wouldn't have left. You wouldn't have did whatever it was that you didn't have the strength to do. You know, so... Mm -hmm. That's the thing about it. It's, it's good that God knows us and he knows what he has planned for us. So we're supposed to just, you know, walk in that thing. So, yeah. Yes, Lisa. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Amen. So, guys, we're going to gate 10. I hope you all still with us. Right. And it says that we missed the connecting flight. We missed the connecting flight. Um, Talk to us about missing the connecting flight. We know where we're supposed to be going. And. We, for whatever reason, get within ourselves and think we know better. And you are going where you're supposed to be going. And to, hey, let me go over here. And then the next thing you know, you've missed where God has. So you're not at that connected mm -hmm. place, you know, at that crossroad, at the place where he had told you to get. And now <laughs> the plane, the ship, the train, the whatever, you've missed it. Can you get back on track? 
Of course you can, because that's exactly what happened. But you got to realize that if you're not staying connected with God, you won't know where he's going to take you because you're not talking to him and, and being in line with his word. So you will never know. You never know. Never you never know. know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yes, missing, miss the connecting flight. Um, sometimes we miss the connecting flight because we want to bring some excess baggage along. I'm trying to tell y'all. Okay. We that's, sometimes we miss it because of that. Woo! Sometimes we miss it because our friend is running late. Okay. And instead of us um, wanting to leave them, right. okay, <laughs> we're missing out because they holding us back. Holding you up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we miss the connecting flight because we let other people get on our in our head. Um, why you want to do that? You're not gonna be good at that. Right. You're not gonna make any money. You're not gonna survive. Like if I was you, I would just go uh, uh get a good job and, and stay where you at and mind your business and you're gonna be all right. Why you wanna move out of this town? Everybody lives here all their life. Right. Why you want to go on vacation? Mm -hmm. Why, 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 why? They're questioning what's meant to be for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And listen, that's not for them to question. You don't have to answer anything. Right. You just got to follow direction and go. So don't miss your connecting flight by not being brave enough to go for the other job. Yes. What's the worst they can tell you is no. Mm -hmm. Don't miss your connecting mm -hmm. flight because you think you're too old. Okay, don't do it. Okay, don't miss your connecting flight because everybody before you didn't look like you, so you mm -hmm. thinking now they're not going to take you. You don't know. Oh, go, come on, good boy, bad lady, you gonna miss your bus driving on them bags like that. Come on, come on, we talking today on Saturday. I'm trying to tell you, yes, yes. Um, wait. Uh, stay steady so you're going to have to get ready when the connecting flight um come Listen. arrive. Yes. Listen. Yes. Yeah. Mary, I'm telling you, don't people tell you why you want to leave this good job where you're getting a bonus, where you got benefits. You want to leave. Listen, most seeds, when they're planted in you, they're planted in you for a reason. Yes. It's so that you can move forward and get everything that you want. And I've never known, to, I, I, I don't know, you tell me, have you ever seen, and I don't care how much the person is getting paid on their job, right? Mm -hmm. I haven't seen anybody working for anybody and they became a millionaire. Right. Or they really, you know, did what it is they wanted to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yes, thank you guys. Wow, these words are so powerful. My heart is full. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Mary. We're glad you're enjoying you. your first class flight here. Yeah. Right? On a first class flight, y'all. Um, mm -hmm. It's the waiting game is the name of the book. Yeah. Um, get it on Amazon. You can get it right now while we're talking to you and let us know that you got it. Talk, talk to us in the chat. Um, mm -hmm. We have to remember that our goals and dreams belong to us. No one mm -hmm. else has to agree or disagree. Keep Amen. the faith and believe. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Mary. Okay. Mm -hmm. So listen, guys, don't miss your connecting fight fooling around with somebody that don't, that's a dream killer. Right. <laughs> Trying to tell you, don't miss right. it. So right. we're bringing them over to the layover. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the layover. The layover happens when we have our flight. We missed our connecting flight. And finally, we get on our connecting flight. But now we're in a place where we have to wait again. So that waiting again has caused you to possibly get discouraged. I have been, you know, down this road for so long. I'm ready to get, you know, off of this flight. Well, the layover means that you might have to stay there overnight. You might have mm. to stay there for three weeks. You might have to stay there for a year or two years or three years or whatever. And so, like I said, in that 15 years of waiting and believing God, and then at the 16 year mark, that's when I started in the dating process of, you know, um, seeing, you know, dates, going on dates and different things like that. And I was like, wow. I said, I, I, I've been on this little journey for a while, you know, but in realizing that now, because I, I asked God, I said, if, if I'm to get married, I don't want to, you know, have this time of dating, get myself in trouble or anything like that. I want to wait. And that's what I what happened. I said, but when it's time for me to start dating and stuff, I want 
to be able to be called on to go on dates and everything. And I'll know that it's you moving. So in that layover time, it took a long time, like three years, you know, but God, you know, so yeah, that was my thing for the layover. Okay, beautiful. Um, I loved it. I won't drag it out. You hit um, a really good point still on the layover, mm -hmm. um, you know, because I could talk for days about this book. I love it. Um, Thanks, but we're going to go to gate 12. We're going to okay. go to day 12. And it says, seat, um, uh, what is it? Seat back and trays up. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're on a flight, you, you got to put the seats up. When they're about to take off, you got to put them trays up. So tell us mm -hmm. about this chapter. The, when we get so comfortable, we get the, you know, get on our flights or get into a position or whatever in our lives and stuff where we get comfortable. But God is saying, okay, I'm, I'm getting ready to either take you up in the air or I'm getting ready to land you. So sit your seat up and be prepared. Pay attention. You know, make sure that what's going on around you, you understand how I'm moving in your life. You know, and so when you put those seats up and those tray tables up, you know, you're getting ready to land. It's coming to the mm -hmm. end now. So be prepared and be, you know, looking out, you know, for what he's doing, you know, in your life. And I was very aware that it was time for some things to change and some things to happen for me. So that's what that was about. Beautiful. And what I got from here is I'll say really quickly is that, you know, great things happen outside of your comfort zone. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Great things happen. Amazing things happen outside of your comfort zone. So sometimes you're just not going to be comfortable doing it mm -hmm. and you got to do it anyway. Right. And then you find when you when you do it, you're like, OK, this is not so bad. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, there are so many good people out there. And I think there, there's also this other saying, right? If you think you can, you probably will be able to do it. If you think you can't, you won't. Right. If you think you're going to meet great people, you probably will. Mm -hmm. If you think everybody is horrible, you're probably going to meet a whole bunch of horrible people. Right. Mm -hmm. And I will say wholeheartedly, me doing this journey here on YouTube, yeah. I have met some amazing, amazing people right. who, you know, although I never laid eyes on them physically and we've been in the same space, when I tell you I love them, I really do. Like right. just great great people mm -hmm. and I, I i take that all like that's god right mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. god having me bump into um you know meet these people um throughout my journey here and mm -hmm. i'm loving it so yeah put your seats up people put that tray up jump outside your comfort zone yes. and i promise you a lot of things that you want is going to meet you there when you mm -hmm. have the courage to say you know what I'm uncomfortable doing this, mm -hmm. but I'm going to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. So um, we at gate 13. Mm -hmm. The landing gear is down. Tell us what's going on here. Yeah, the landing gear is down. Um, when I met my husband, and like I said, I knew that it was him. For me, this particular book wasn't just about me being single. It was about me being stuck. My mind mm -hmm. and what I perceived was happening had changed. My perception of things had changed. I looked at stuff differently. And um, when I did, the, the the landing gear came down and I knew that we I was go going down, but not going down in what I was believing God for. I was going down because it was time for me to land. I was coming mm -hmm. in for a smooth landing and I was ready for it. So I was excited um, the way that I looked at things, the way that I knew, you know, God was taking me, you know, places. And so I just looked at it different, you know, um, forgiveness was a part of that, forgiving people for things that they had said to me or done to me. That was a part of it. I, I was like, you can say whatever. Okay. Praise the Lord. You know, I, that's, how, <laughs> that's how I thought about it, you know, so <laughs> I thought about it like that. Yes. So let, let me tell you, I'm, I, this for me too um, was a great chapter, right? The landing gear down. And I want to say this, like the power of um, forgiving people and letting go and the power of apologizing and, and, and you know, just saying, you know what, um, if I hurt you or harmed you, you know, apologizing, it's freedom in that, right? right. Because again, when you carry grudges, 
That's mm -hmm. part of your excess baggage, right? Yeah. When you carry grudges, when you can't let stuff go, when you don't realize that other people are human and mm -hmm. should be forgiven. Um, again, I want to say from the Bible, listen, I can't quote things exactly, but there's a chapter that says, um, how many times should I forgive? And it's like 70 times seven, seven mm -hmm. times 70 mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. So that to me means that you just got to always keep forgiving and keep move forgiving. on. Now, yep. that doesn't mean that you have to let that person trample all over you. Mm -hmm. You can forgive them and move on with your life, but you got to <laughs> forgive. <laughs> right. Yeah, you, you got to forgive. Mm -hmm. And when they say forgiveness is for yourself, I will uh, attest to that. Yes. It wholeheartedly is. Mm -hmm. I really try not to hold judges. I really try to look at people and, and say to myself, you know what? Um, even if they did mean it that way, I'm moving on. And right. I definitely know the power in an apology. Mm -hmm. Um, if I know for fact, I, I, you, I, you feel like I wronged you. Um, I don't have no problem apologizing to you. Mm -hmm. Now, whether you accept it or not, that's on you, that's on you. but, um, mm -hmm. but I, I don't have a problem apologizing. Right. Cause I want to get to my destiny. So amen. Um, I agree. Love you. Um, uh, amen. Diva. I agree. Love you. You're a wonderful kind of person. God sent people to you as well. Yes, mm -hmm. he does. Amen. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if we open our mind and our hearts, um, the goodness and the greatness, it will come. Right. It will come. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we're at the chapter that you're going to read a little piece to us, right? Okay. Chapter mm -hmm. 14 here, um, yeah. baggage claim. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to be quiet and let's hear the piece that you want to read to us. Okay. Um, the piece that I wanted to read is, I knew my journey would need three seasoned women of God who were saved. They knew the word, was sanctified and had godly marriages um, to glean from. They handled my bags with care. I never had to worry about losing a garment or my deepest secrets or anything being stolen from because it was in their care. I confided in them with my deepest, most sincere, most transparent desires for a husband. And they got in agreement with me. And that's mm. one of the things that when you are claiming those bags and those bags that you know that are yours, these are the people that I called my Gucci peas. I had a, <laughs> a hard case Samsonite. You know, the Gucci piece is cute and all that other stuff. Hard case Samsonite. You can pack everything in there. And um, it's hard on the outside, but just so soft and tender hearted on the inside. And my old faith for the suitcases that we throw in the basement and nobody really wants to car carry them. They have to spray Lysol in there to use them but they can hold some deep things. You can put a lot of stuff. You can get it packed on down and sit on it. Them old fashioned ones you zip up and everything. And so these were women who I know that I could trust. These are women mm -hmm. who had taken time out of their families with their children and their husbands and they helped me. And that's one of the things that I really, really wanted people to understand. Get you some people that support you. Get you some suitcases that, you know, people that support you. And in my case, in this, it was, you know, those pieces and stuff. So I just, you know, I love the fact that God gave me these um, different ways that I can present, you know, the book and everything. And so it's not just about being single. It's not just about, you know, different things. It's about getting yourself unstuck. Stop thinking about things the way you have. If you're trying to get somewhere and do something, we can do it. I was 39 when I got married. And 42, Amen. I had my first child. And 44 when I had the second child. And that really? was in book number two. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, oh. that's what I said, my miracle babies. Oh, yep. right. congratulations. I Thank love you. it. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully I'll be 55 with my first marriage. Uh, yeah. Pray, join me in prayer. Join me in prayer. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be in agreement um, with you. Yes, come in agreement with me. That yes. is a beautiful story. Thank um, you. Because sometimes, too, it's hard. I think part of discouragement that comes with us ladies um, is that it's like men, they're fortunate, right? At any time in their life, I mean, even when they sit be, they can get with somebody, get married and still have their family. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, us, if we want to birth our own children, so to speak, mm -hmm. we do have a time frame. Right. Mm -hmm. we're, we're on a little schedule there. Right. And that sometimes it depresses people even more because they're right. like, oh, my God, 
that, you know, for lack of a better word, the clock is ticking. But mm -hmm. to hear an amazing story like yours, like just it helps somebody in that holding pattern to say, OK, wait, mm -hmm. this can still happen for mm -hmm. me. Right. Um, I love it. But what I love here is, and the, and the thing I want to say to people is that when people tell you their, their, their secrets, um, so to speak, or, or their deepest desires, mm -hmm. um, handle them and hold them with care, yes. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I don't take it lightly. And, you know, I'm a, like um, up the type now, you know, because, you know, I'm of a certain age. Like, you tell it to me. I listen, I pray mm -hmm. for you and I forget it because I'm, mm -hmm. not, I'm not going to repeat your, I'm going to go to the yeah. grave with your with secret. With your story, <laughs> right, exactly. With your story. You mm -hmm. better believe that. If there's one thing I could do, we all have our good things about us, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you know, my superpower is you tell me, probably nine times out of ten, I'm going to forget it anyway, <laughs> but if you tell me, <laughs> I'm going to take it to my grave. I promise you. And even to me, if you fall out with some person, like you still should hold take those, it, yes. hold yep. those secrets. Mm -hmm. You got to mm -hmm. be the keeper of those secrets because mm -hmm. the worst thing you can do is when you have a friend and y'all fall out and then you want to tell their business, their don't business. do that. Right. Um, so, so yes, keep their secrets, hold them mm -hmm. tight, pray with them. Yes. Um, and they're and they're pray with you. Um, yeah. so I love that that you had the people that you can trust in, mm -hmm. and that was with you on your journey. Yeah. Um, I have I have many of them. I'm I'm very fortunate. You know, I have a lot of good girlfriends that I I love so much, and I promise you, like I could call them and they they spoil me. I told them, "This is like y'all making me terrible for the person that's about to come in my life." Right. <laughs> I think about I the inside that. of, um, sorry, the suitcases, those bands. I'm like, what are uh -huh. these bands for? It, I just looked at it like the Holy Spirit just hugging you, just wow. hugging you, hanging in there. So what you had in there, even though they throw that suitcase around coming down the conveyor belt, when you opened it up, it was still intact and still in place. Mm. And I was like, Come on, God. So, yeah, that was a really exciting thing for me, you know, that they helped me like that. They kept me like that. So God bless them. God bless them. So Lee Archer said, I'm so glad I was in YouTube and saw this video. Once I forgave, I felt much better. You do feel better. I do need some um, I do need someone else's bag. Hold on to the secrets. Thank mm -hmm. you for the video. Oh, you're mm -hmm. welcome. We're glad you're here. You. Um, Lee Armstrong, in case you came late. Um, there is a book. This is Benita A. Lee. She wrote a book. It's called The Waiting Game. It will bless your whole life. Um, get it on Amazon. And I'm gonna update the description and tell you all the other places on um, where you can find this book. I'm the same way. I call myself the secret squirrel. There, there you go. Hey. <laughs> okay, guys, we're almost Thank there. You. We're at gate 15 and it's called jet lag. Um, tell us about jet lag. Okay, jet lag was like even though you've taken your flight, you've gotten off, you went to baggage claim, and now comes a whirlwind of everything that has happened. You know, you've gone through everything and then jet lag, it's like you're in a fog. Is this mm. really happening for me? Is this mm. really going on? And it's like, yeah, it's real, you know, but you got to get past that little jet lag. Jet lag. My sister, um, Alicia, was in Germany and I went to go see her and it was like a 16 hour flight. I, I didn't know what jet lag was until I did that. <laughs> I got over there and I'm like, Ooh, to sleep, you know, you either lacking sleep or you sleeping so much. So, you know, when you get to where God has you going and everything, you know, you, you're going to, you know, be there and it might seem unreal, you know, but it's always a good thing when you know, yes, I understand what you're saying, when you know what you're supposed to be doing. So, yeah, that was what that was about. Yes. So mm -hmm. that was our final um, destination, guys, that yeah. jet lag. And yes, it is. It's almost like it's like, oh, my God, my dream came true. Yes. I've been praying for this. I've been waiting on this. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I've been watching other people uh, um, have their fun and realize their dreams. Mm -hmm. And it's like, wow, oh, my goodness. Here I am. I'm winning now, so to speak, yes. also, right? Yeah. It's Thank the you. most amazing thing and it's the best feeling in the world. Yes. Um, and when you wake up and you're like, okay, all of this waiting, all of this hard work, 
and here I am. Here mm -hmm. I am exactly. in the of my moment, right? Exactly. Um, so I want to repeat this, guys, because we took you through every chapter. You need to get this book because it's so many reasons and it's going to touch you. And, you know, maybe get one and share with a friend, right? It's called The Waiting Game by Benita A. Lee. Um, Black Swan, don't forget, hit me up in my um, email. Um, I hope that this, um, you know, review has really blessed y'all and touched y'all. Um, this would be an awesome movie. It most <laughs> certainly would be. You, you. And you know why? Because it's like, you know, so many of us, we all, believe it or not, we all have so much in common. We actually have more in common than we don't, mm -hmm. right? We all have our fears. We all have our disappointments. We all have our dreams. And mm -hmm. we're all looking for a way to follow our dreams and, you know, find a way, like when we seem to be in a bump up against the wall mm -hmm. or in the road, like how do we like still stay the course mm -hmm. when we're mm -hmm. at this, you know, um, path in the road where it just seems like we're stuck, we're in a holding pattern, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So it seems so weird with that. So, Benita, you know what? I can talk to you forever. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I can talk to you forever, too. I love uh, sharing. <laughs> I, I absolutely um, love your spirit, your soul. Um, you. I love the fact that we got an opportunity here at Chronicles of the Great Hair Diva to, to go over your book, The Waiting Game. Um, mm -hmm. Don't forget, guys, please, please um, purchase the book. Buy one for me and my best friend. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mary, you're planning to buy the book also. Thank you, guys. We truly, truly appreciate it. So before we leave the building, Bonita, mm -hmm. um, you, you know, there's so much going on in the world today. It's so easy to be discouraged. Um, mm -hmm. What would you like to say to everyone as we close out today? One of the things that I would say is keep your head up, be mm -hmm. encouraged, know that no matter what, where you're at, what you're going through, that you have to think about things differently. You have to look at life so much different than what it is because we're only here temporarily. If you're in Christ, you're only here temporarily. This is a temporary place. But while you're here, enjoy the journey encourage others. If you have it to help someone or to do something, be able to help them. And that'll make you feel better, but you're also sowing seeds. So mm. I would say, you know, keep, keep your hands open. So you're always giving and you're ready to receive, always giving, you're ready to receive. And, and that's how I look at, you know, look at life. Things can happen bad. You know, we know that they are, you know, but you mm -hmm. still have to look at the good in it, you know, and forgive quickly. Oh, my goodness. Don't hold the hold the grudges. So, <laughs> yes, no holding grudges. Miss mm -hmm. uh, Queen of the Moor, Amazon, mm -hmm. Amazon, uh, um, Barnes and Noble. And I'm going to update the um, description in the description box to give everybody um, all the ways in which you can purchase the book and support The Waiting Game and Bonita A. Lee. And definitely when she writes her second book so we can hear more about, you know, how she met her husband and mm -hmm. had her two miracle children. Uh, so never give up hope, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to support the next book, the second book when it comes out. Mm -hmm. So I close out by saying this. I hope that um, this has blessed your Saturday like it has blessed mine. We also hope that you go out and buy the book, The Waiting Game. You won't be disappointed. Forgive easy, okay? Let go. Mm -hmm. Follow your dreams no matter what you do. Follow your dreams. Mm -hmm. And if you stay the course, even when it seems like you're not going to win, if you stay the course and be consistent, I promise you, I promise you, you will wake up and be like, wow, in the fall, like, oh, my God, I'm here. Yeah. So once again, thank you guys for stopping by. Um, we truly appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Most of my book reviews are going to be held on Saturdays. Um, you know, Saturdays is going to be our like our everyday people series where we're bringing in authors. We're bringing in inspirational stories just to help uplift our spirit and give us a, something a little different than what we do normally in the week. Um, so thank you again, guys. Have a great, amazing Saturday. I'll see you next time. But need to stay backstage, okay? okay. I'm closing okay. out. All right, okay. thank you, guys. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thank you, <laughs>